guys, so I just wanted to talk about my Amdahl edition because I had it on Sunday. Um, and I wanted to talk about it before I forgot because it's Tuesday now and I kind of wanted to make a video sooner, but whatever, it's not a big deal. Um, so Saturday I got like little to no sleep for being nervous and um, just stressing out, not drinking enough water. Pretty much everything that could go wrong kind of went wrong. Like, I had to change my outfit. I changed my song at the last second. Um, I wasn't fully prepared with my monologue, which is my fault. Um, let's see, what else went wrong? I didn't really get to rehearse with my sister the night before. Um, I ate pizza the night before. I um, didn't drink enough water. <laughs> Like, I mean, I guess not everything that could go wrong, because I didn't have any wardrobe malfunctions. Um, but yeah, so it was kind of stressful the night before. But Sunday morning, I woke up pretty easily. I didn't rush to get ready, but I got ready. My hair looked perfect. Um, the pictures I took were not perfect, so I'm not posting any of those. But I looked pretty awesome. Um, it was literally, I just wore black. It's not really anything special. I just wore black. The only thing I really liked was my hairstyle, because it was kind of this up do but not really because my hair is short um but it was really cute let's see so we drive to the audition and the Hyatt Regency is the most okay actually I don't know if it's the most beautiful hotel I've been in because I've been to New York but for Phoenix it was the best hotel that I've been in like there it was like a castle inside it was beautiful so I thought we were in the wrong place because <laughs> it's like there's no way the audition could be here there's not really any signs saying like hey I'm the people come audition here um, so we asked the front desk and they directed us upstairs which is even more beautiful um, so when you get up there you um, th there's a table there was a table in kind of like the back corner we walk up to it and there's a representative there um, and she or he I guess um, ours, mine was really incredibly nice, um, she was really kind, really cheerful, really helpful, um, she asked if there was anything that we needed, um, to kind of extra prepare, I guess. Um, there is a form that you fill out, um, from what I remember, it kind of asks a lot of the same questions that the application asked, um, like what your experience was, your name, all that fun stuff, high school stuff. Um, if you, I mean, like if you graduated high school, um, and how much college you've had. Um, there were not a lot of audition E's. There were nine for Phoenix. Um, so I really, really, really suggest talking to them because they're not, your, they're not your enemies. This isn't, I mean, yeah, you want to be the best you that you can be, and you need, you need to allow them to be the best them that they are, but... It's not a competition. You're all there to follow your dream, and I think you should really be supportive of each other. Um, plus, it kind of helps get the jitters out if you talk about like what you love about the arts and what you love about what you do. Um, it definitely helped me calm my nerves. Um, so if you just talk with them, even if they're not auditioning for the same thing that you are, because I was talking to this actor auditionee, and I'm auditioning, or I auditioned for musical theater. So whoever is there, dance, musical theater, whatever, you're all in the same room. Um, so there's food there. I would say if you're auditioning for musical theater, um, I guess really for acting too, don't drink the, if they have anything dairy, don't drink it, don't eat it. Um, you're really going to want to prepare your voice. Um, so I drank tea, which is weird. Um, it was Tazo tea, it was the passion tea, it was really good. Um, and I put honey in it, which I hate honey, and I put lemon in it too, because those three things really help. Do not drink cold water either. Um, it's, I mean, it doesn't, it's not really, I don't know if it's scientific or not, but just drink lukewarm water, not scalding water, but try and stay away from the ice cold water, because it's going to constrict you, I guess. And I'm, I'm not really technical. Um, so that's that, um, one, one group at a time, like the musical theater people, the dance people, and the acting people, and whoever else they have there, um, you'll be asked to 
go out of the Continental Breakfast waiting room place and dance people get to run through, dance and musical theater people get to run through their pieces. Um, musical theater people get to run through with their accompanist and dance people get to run through their dance and they also learn another dance. Um, there, I guess, kind. I didn't audition for dance, so I don't know, but I guess kind of to see how quickly you can pick up on things. Um, and then the acting people, from what I understood from talking to people, was um, they did not get a prep time. They literally went in with their two monologues, and their audition was done after that. Um, so when we, when dance and musical theater people were going in to warm up or rehearse or um, practice with our accompanist. The, uh, the acting people literally went in and auditioned. Like, that was their audition. So, not to freak you out or anything, but that's kind of how it went. I don't know if it, how it is for every place, but that's how it was for Phoenix. Um, so, musical the I can't really talk about dance or acting because I didn't participate in those auditions, but musical theater, um, your group all goes out at the same time, and you all wait in the audition room, so the room that you practice in, from what I understand, for what my experience was, the room you practice in with the accompanist is the room that you're going to audition in. Makes sense. Um, so you bring in your music, you hand it to the accompanist. My accompanist was incredibly kind. Um, your accompanist should be too. Um, if they're ambient people, they should be. <laughs> um, and the cool thing about the accompanist is that they actually hire in that city slash state, so they don't have to fly anyone out, which I think is cool. Um, my accompanist was from Mesa, so that was really cool because my grandma's from Mesa. Um, but she'll run through, he or she will run through it with you and ask, okay, is this the right tempo? Is there anything else I need to know? Like, if you're going to hold this out longer, do you want me to go to this chord then? Um, just to kind of get a feel of what you want. The other thing to keep in mind is that the accompanist is supposed to follow you. You're not following the accompanist. You are the artist here. It's not the piano player and the auditioner. It's the auditioner and then the piano player. So keep that in mind because that isn't, that's going to be really crucial for your audition because you, you want your adjudica adjudicator to know that you are in control of what you're doing and you are going to be powerful about it um, and insist that the audition or the um, accompanist does what you want. And th if they're a good accompanist, they'll be able to do that. And they should be. Um... So then after that, you kind of have a little bit of time to talk to um, the other auditionees in your little group. I really, really, really suggest doing that. Like, I cannot stress it enough. It's really important. Um, even if you're shy, which you shouldn't be, um, just talking to them, talking about what their piece is and what your piece is and what your monologues are and just talk to them because it's going to help you get your nerves under control and it's going to help them get their nerves under control and that's nice. Hi guys! So this is part two of the what to prepare for for the AMD audition and what to expect. Um, I'm sorry it's so late. I've just been really really busy with life. So here it is. Have fun! Um, so after you finish your um, rehearsal, your practice with the accompanist, you, you're supposed to go back to the waiting room, so I go back to the waiting room, and I keep talking to other people, and they have the actors go out, and they have the dancers go out, and then after a short period of time, they take you again in your group, and they take you to the audition space where you practice, and you're, they put you in an order, and you're supposed to remember the order that you're going to go in, and when you go in, um, they do have a camera, it's not, I mean, our camera wasn't huge, it was like literally this big on the side of her desk. You couldn't really see it. It was conspicuous or inconspicuous. Um, it was not a problem. Um, but keep in mind that you, you're you going to talk to the camera. I'm sorry about the ink on my hands. I was writing. You're going to talk to the camera and say, hi, my name is so-and-so. These are the pieces I'm doing. And then after that, you do not look at the camera and you do not look at the adjudicator after that. Because then you are in your own space, the audition room is your stage, you are performing. Think of it that way. It's not an addition. Think of it as you already got the part or the role or whatever you're doing and perform it. Because it is a performance. 
Um, and I kind of wish I would have thought that going into my audition because I kind of messed up on my song even, which I thought was weird. I started singing the wrong verse, um, only because I did my, my introduction in a way that I hadn't practiced it. I just kind of spoke words. Um, but just go with the flow. It's easy. Think of it as you already got the part. You're just performing it. And there just happens to be one person there. And you're not going to look her in the eye, find a spot on the wall, um, act out to an imaginary audience. Um, just don't look at her all the time. I mean, I guess you could have some eye contact with her, but you really shouldn't. Um, she or he might say something after. Um, if they don't, don't feel bad about it. Um, no words are good words, and good words are good words. Um, my adjudicator asked me how long I had been or what kind of training I had had, so I talked to her about the performances that I've been in and everything. Um, she all, she asked some others um, why they chose AMDA. I mean, she kind of, I feel like she talked to everyone, but she might not talk to you, so if your adjudicator doesn't talk to you, do not feel like you did something wrong. The other thing to keep in mind after your audition is that it is done. Your audition at that point, I mean, your performance part of the audition is done. There's not anything you can do. You can't go back in time and change anything. It is finished. Like, there's no point in saying, oh, I messed up on that. They're going to hate me. This is that. I did this wrong. I suck. Blah, blah, blah. Because you're still going to have communication with them. Because after your audition, you have this one-on-one -on -one interview. So if you walk out of your audition and you wash over all of this, I suck. I messed up on this. I messed up on that. And you go to your interview they're going to see that, and that's part of your audition, too. Keep that in mind. Um, in the personal interview, um, you talk to the rep that you saw in the beginning with the paperwork, and um, they'll pretty much ask you the questions that you answered on your essays for the application. She asked me about a hardship. She asked me if my grades reflected um, who I am as a person and how passionate I am about the arts. Um, it's okay if you choose to discuss other um, hardships that you went through if they ask that. Um, I spoke about something different than I did in my essay um, just to kind of give her more insight onto who I am because that's not the only issue I've been through. Um, so if you want to divulge more, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. If you just want to talk about what you wrote about, that's totally fine. Um, and then after that, you go back into the waiting room and then the next person who does their audition will go and do their personal interview and then when all the personal interviews are finished and all of the auditions are finished, they do this big group thing and they talk about a typical day at AMDA, they talk about financial aid, they talk about um, performance opportunities, what teachers do, because a lot of times the teachers are still performing themselves, um, which is really awesome because then you're getting the most up-to-date information about the industry and that's the other thing too they really care about putting you um, preparing you for what's out there it's not so much about um, giving you the technique and everything they want you to be up to pace with what's going on in the world um, something else to keep in mind is that when you're in your audition for the school you're also auditioning for a scholarship slash grant at the same time so um, and there's not any application you have to fill out, it's just automatically, if you get accepted, they may or may not help you out with some money. Um, make sure that you have all of your information in, like all of your application stuff in. Um, if you need to bring anything to them, they said it takes a couple days to process it. So wait, I don't know, what did she say, like four days? My audition, my audition was Sunday and I'm calling on Thursday to make sure they have all my information. Um, make sure you do that. Um, they give you these cool pens that have the telephone number on them um, to call and see if they have all of your information. Definitely do that regardless of if you know you had it all in because you want to make sure that they did get it. Um, if you send in all your information on time by your audition date or whatever, you'll know in two to or four to six weeks. I don't know, like a month, two to four weeks I think is what it was. Um, what I found surprising was that school actually started in October and not August, which is cool. Um, yeah, so just remember that you are it. You own your space. This audition is relaxed. It's going to be fine. Just take it easy. Do not stress about it. It's going to be perfection. That's my new saying, I guess. So just remember that you're it.
and you're going to do great. You're going to do the best that you can do, even if it's not perfect. And keep that in mind, too, that it's a school. It's not a role. It's not a part. It's not something that you need to be at a professional level at. This is a school. They want to teach you. They want to see potential in you. So even if you do mess up, they can still see potential and something that they can work with. That's what they want to see is something that they can work with. Um, so if you do mess up, don't stress about it. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You can audition again. There are other schools, but keep that you are it thing in your mind because the performance world is going to be wherever you make it. Wherever you are is where it's going to be. So, yeah. Um, that's the kind of audition process. I might make another video about my personal audition. Um, I may not. This video is already 15 minutes long, so... Um, I hope that answers questions. If you have any 